or go on YouTube, well, on Friday, Dollar Financial Service drop its prospectus as the company look to raise money from the capital market while at the same time list on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Well, in this video, we will be reviewing that prospectus, but here we are going to do. We are going to review the prospectus in two parts, all right? So the first part, which is this video, we will be doing a qualitative analysis of the company, all right? So we are going to look on the important dates of the prospectus. We're going to look at the company's background, the historical background of the company, where the company is coming from and where it is heading. All right, we're going to look at the strategy, the board of directors and all these things. All right, in this video, now the second video or the follow up video, we will be looking at the figures. All right, or we will be telling the company's story using the figures or the financial statement of the company. All right, and you don't want to miss that. So if you have not already subscribed to the channel, please, now beg you, subscribe to the channel, press the post notification bell so when we drop the follow-up video, you will be one of the first person to know when the video drop. Also, like the thing, share the thing, comment, and we could keep the discussion going, all right? We could get into the video. What we are looking at is the sheet that contains the summary of the key information of this prospectus, all right? So this is the key information, and this is the information that most people are interested in. All right, so what we notice, the company that is offering these shares for sale is known as Dollar Financial Service Limited, all right? So that is Dollar Financial Service Limited, and the company is selling up to 500 million shares. All right, so up to 500 million shares is up for grab, and they are going at $1 per share. All right, so what you realize is that the company wants to take up to $500 million from the market. All right, so they're selling 500 million shares at $1 per share. All right, so timetable of key dates. So this, this prospectus was registered on May 19 and published on the 20th. And the opening date of the prospectus or the opening date of the offer is on May 27, 2022. And I think that's about Friday. All right, so on May 22, um, 27, 2022, the offer will be open. But as I know, if it is that you're interested in this offer after we, re we review the offer, if you're interested, you need to get at this as early as Tuesday after the Monday holiday. All right, so Tuesday will be the first business day. All right, for the week. So if you're interested, you need to start. Or you need to purchase this on Tuesday and not to wait until the closing date because you know how the thing go. Them thing are start open and close in seconds, all right? Now, as I mentioned, closing, the closing date will be, is slated for June 10, 2022. All right, so here it is, the company is giving you some time. And the opening date, that's about, that's about five days. It's not that bad to review the prospectus. I've read the prospectus and it's not too long a read, all right? And it is well organized so you can skip through and it's not a lot of repetition in the prospectus. All right, so this offer opens on May the 27th, 2022, and it is looking to close on June 10, 2022 but we suspect that this one will go in split seconds. All right, so if you're interested, you need to get at it from the get-go. 
All right, so they're saying early application will be received but not processed until the opening date. All early application will be treated as having been received at the same time being nine o'clock on the opening date, all right? However, you still need to go before the opening date. The basis of allotment. All right, so they're saying it will be done on a first come first serve basis. That's how the allotment, um, that's the format the allotment will take place. However, if it is oversubscribed, which we suspect this one will be vastly oversubscribed, the allotment will left, be left up to the director's discretion. All right, so it is the directors that will decide how these shares will be allotted. All right, and them normally do it on a prorata basis. So what that means is that you get a portion of the total amount that you subscribe for. So them normally do it so, so everybody can get little, you know what I mean? They want as much subscribers in as possible to get the shares in as much people's hand as possible. All right. So confirmation of basis allotment. Uh, um, a notice confirming the provision basis of allotment will be posted on the website of the Jamaica Stock Exchange some six days after the closing date. All right, so six days after the closing date, you can look to see, you can check the Jamaica Stock Exchange site to see how much stock you have gotten all right so what portion of the total amount that you applied for you actually get all right now as i said the company is looking to distribute or offer is offering up some 500 million shares at one dollar all right, but not all of that 500 million shares will go to the general public. Here we see where they are reserving. Some amount of the shares will be reserved. All right, so the reserve shares would be some 800, I mean, the reserve shares will be 287 million 500,000 shares. All right, it will be reserved. And the reserve buckets, there will be two reserve buckets. All right, A and B. Reserve bucket A will contain 125 million shares. All right, so you can see 125 million shares, whereas reserve bucket B will have 162 million 500 shares. All right, reserve bucket A will go to company applicants all right so those shares will be, will be reserved for people that worked in the company or affiliated with the company all right whereas reserve bucket b which contains 162 million 500 shares those will go to key partners all right and when you talk about key partners you're talking about companies that does business with dollar financial service all right, so the suppliers, key people that does business with the company, the brokerage firm, all right? So brokerage firm, people that are unloading these shares to the general public, they have a reserve shares to tap into. Now, as you know, if the total reserve shares are not taken up, then what you find happening is that the, the leftover will trickle down to the next priority applicant and from that those priority applicant then to the general public so the general public is hoping to get some of these reserve shares to get some of these reserve shares in their hands all right because it doesn't seem like it's a lot of shares that will be taken up or that is offered to the general public so again these are the time 
9.30 and it will close on 4.30 June 10th. So it will open 9.30 June, um, May 27 and close on 4.30 June 10th. All right. All right, so what we find here is that there's a minimum amount that the company must raise in order to be listed or in order to be qualified to get the listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So that minimum amount is 250 million shares, all right? So the company must raise at least $250 million in order to be qualified to list on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Let's look at the corporate structure of the company. All right, so this is how the company is structured. So the company that you're looking to buy into is Dollar Financial Service Limited, which is this company right here. All right, so this is a company you're looking to buy into. This is a company that is offering shares for sale on the market all right but this company owns a company that is known as dollar guyana inc all right so dollar financial service limited owns 100 percent of dollar guyana inc so what that means when you purchase dollar financial service limited when you purchase shares in Dollar Financial Service Limited, you eventually owns a part of Dollar Guyana Inc. All right, because Dollar Financial Service is a parent of Dollar Guyana Inc. All right, so pre-IPO, Dollar Financial Service Limited is, is owned by two companies, all right? So First Rock Private Equity Limited, this company right here, which is a subsidiary of First Rock Holding Group. All right, so this is a private equity arm of First Rock Holding Group. And this company, First Rock Private Equity Limited, owns some 75% of Dollar Financial Service Limited. All right, so it is a minority shareholder of Dollar Financial Service Limited, but then the minority shareholder pre-IPO is Equity Capital Management Limited, which owns some 25% of Dollar Financial Service Limited. All right. So this is of importance though. All right. One of these two companies, I don't know which one of them, will be selling of some of the shares that is on offer, all right? So of the 500 million shares that is on offer, half of it, which is 250 million shares, are newly created shares. So those are shares that are newly created, whereas half of it, 250 million shares, is coming from either from one of either those two current owners of the of the share of the of the company i mean all right so they are the selling share owners the document did not say which one of those two are selling off shares but we'll get some more into that so dollar financial service limited has authorized shares the company has authorized shares that is unlimited. All right, so what that means, the company can raise an unlimited amount of money from the market. All right, so the company does not have to go back to the authorities to get its authorized shares amended in order to raise um, capital from the capital market. All right, so the company has an unlimited amount of shares, authorized shares, that is. 
all right and of that unlimited amount the company issued so far some 2.25 billion of that all right so the amount of shares in issue currently is 2 billion 250 thousand um, 250 million shares all right so the the current count of shares issued currently is 2 billion 250 million shares the maximum number of shares to be issued in the invitation is 250 million and just like i said um, before these are the newly created shares all right so these are the shares that will be issued the new shares that will come on board is 250 million whereas 250 million will be sold from existing shareholders so this portion here all right which is the other 250 million is the maximum of shares um, the maximum of sales shares in the invitation to be sold by selling shareholders all right so some people are selling their shares. One of the two companies are, are, um, is going to sell some of their shares. Now, what is said is that one of those two companies has borrowed some money on behalf of the company, on behalf of Dollar Financial Service. All right. So now they are selling these shares so as to repay those loans. So again, one of the two companies has borrow, uh, borrowed some money on behalf of Dollar Financial Service Limited. So this selling off of shares is to repay that loan, all right? So what you find happening is that half of the money raised will not go in the coffer of Dollar Financial Service Limited, but it will go to repay a loan that was taken up on behalf of the company. Okay, so what we spoke about is the, in the corporate structure is the ownership, the percentage ownership of Dollar Financial Service Limited. All right, so we said that First Rock Private Equity Limited who owns some 75% of the company pre-IPO, whereas Equity Capital Management Limited owned some 25%. All right, so what we find happening is that this is post IPO that we are looking at now. All right, so in post IPO, first private, first rock private equity here will own some 1 billion 500 million shares, which is equivalent to some 60% of the shares outstanding. All right, so coming from a 75%, that seems like 15% dilution of the shares, all right, of the percentage of the company. So First Rock Private Equity is giving up some 15% of its ownership stake, whereas Equity Capital Management, which owned pre-IPO some 25% of the company, will own post-IPO, they will own some 500 million shares, 500 million of the outstanding, which is equivalent to just 20%. So that is a dilution of 5%, all right? Now the general public, which I know that you guys are interested in, will own only 8.5% 8, 8 of the shares. So that's, a not, that's not a lot of shares in the public or the general public hands. And you know that, here is where most of the trading will come from. All right, so the traders, the day traders are mostly the general public. Whereas we know that a lot of the reserve shares will be held for long-term. All right, so the general public will own some two, 212 million, 500,000 shares. All right, here, no. And you know how the reserve will go, all right? So the reserves, the company applicant will own 5% of the company or 125 million. 
whereas the key partners will own 6.5% of the company or 162,500,000. All right, so that's how the ownership stake will look post IPO. All right, so it's not a bad look. All right, so 80% of the company's stock will be concentrated in the top two um, shareholders, which is First Rock Private Equity Limited and Dequity. All right, Dequity Capital Management Limited. Those two companies will have a combination of 80% of the shares post IPO. So let us talk about the company for a brief period. All right, so before we get into the usage of the funds and the policy, uh, the dividend policy, which I know that a lot of you guys want to hear about, what I want to do is to get an understanding of the company, what it is that the company does and the, the, the journey that the company has been through to know IPOing, all right? It is very important to understand the journey of the company so we can understand the strategy of the company in the past and the strategy that the company might adhere to in the future and or how the company might change strategy going forward. All right, so Dollar Financial Service Limited operates in the financial service. It's a financial service company which operates in the micro financial sector. All right, so as you know it, there's a lot of opportunities in the macro and the micro financial sector because you have what them call unbanked or underbanked people. All right, so if you want to know which one of the category you're, um, you're, 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 you're a part of, just look at how easy or how hard it is for you to get a loan from the bank. All right. And that can tell you which category you're in, whether, you, whether or not you're on the bank or unbanked. All right. So it is said that a lot, a large, um, it is said that a large portion of the Jamaican population is either underbanked or unbanked. So this means that they do not have access to the banking service or products within the banking service, all right? So as a result of this, it creates opportunity for microfinance companies to offer financial products or to design financial products to suit these people, all right? So this is the opportunity that Dollar Financial Service is trying to take advantage of. All right, so the suites of product that dollar financial service offer can be divided into three main category. And that's one, loans and financial division. All right, two, you have the remittance and the bill payment division. And three, you have the cambio division. All right. Now, Dollar was incorporated in 2009, but the company never started operating until five years later. That is in 2014, all right? And that's exactly the time that it took the company to get the Cambio and the remittance license from the BOJ, all right? So this information has this is very important information so what it is telling us is that to get into this business there's a barrier of entry to the business as one would have to get licensed all right to operate the cambio and the remittance business all right and that creates a barrier of entry and it takes time for one to get into the business it, it took them some five years to get that license one other thing that is important is that uh, we will get into this in more detail as uh, we go through the presentation, but I'll make mention of it here, all right? Is the microfinancial sector is now under the regulation of the BOJ, 
All right, so that sector will be regulated. The law is now passed and they are fine tuning the law and getting the 200 companies that operate or the over 200 companies that operate within the sector to now register with the BOJ. Now, Dollar Financial Service has been operating in the, the Cambio sector and the remittance sector which they would have they are regulated by the boj so this creates some advantages for them in that they are compliant with the boj they have worked with the boj and they know the steps and the procedures and the requirements of how a regulated company should operate all right so that puts them ahead of the pack all right so and then this must have instilling them some governance practices in order to adhere to the BOJ rules, which they have done. So now that the sector is now being tightly regulated, this would not be an issue for this company going forward. And we're seeing this as one of the strengths of the company. All right. However, what we notice is that the Cambio and the remittance and bill payment service were the initial offerings of the company, all right? So it is only after they had started offering the Cambio and the remittance and the bill payment service that they decided to enter the microfinance sector and start offering loans. All right, but it never took the company long to start expanding. I was aware there is this company called M24 Investment Limited. All right, so M24 is a, was a fast-growing microfinancing company located at the western end of the country. All right, and in 2016, Dollar Financial Service proceeded to acquire the loan book of this company all right so dollar moving to take up the loan book and buy out the loan book from them because it seems like this company had a very diversified well-structured loan book all right and it seems like it would add value to 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 dollar financial service all right strategy which it seems like they were looking to enter the microfinancial sector all right but the high point of the deal is the fact that Mr. Kadeen Mears, which was the CEO of M24, stayed on board and start manning or governing or leading the dollar financial group, all right, or the dollar financial operation. All right, so when they acquired the, 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 the loan book from this company, they allowed the, the management to stay on and become the manager of uh, the CEO of this new company, our Dallas company, all right? Because it seems that this management, uh, this person, Mr. Mears, knows the game, all right? Or knows the, the micro credit industry like the back I'm on. So he's good at the game, all right? So in his tenure at the at Dallas, he has vast achievement all right and it is said that his focus is on high margin business while he de-emphasizes lower margin business all right so the you know the game and and he has been doing quite well at the company Right. So after taking over the um, at the helm of of Dallas Financial Service, the margins of the company start to Im improve. All right. So he was about margins. All right. So we we'll see we are now in 2028. The board of directors of Dallas decided to rid itself of the remittance, the bill payment, and the cambio business because these are low margin business all right so here's where the company starting out as a remittance and a cambio business 
adding financial uh, microfinancial credit to the business and the microfinancial credit was doing so well in terms of its margins and the efficiency that can be had in that business and the growth that presents itself in that business all right then they finally decided no to rid themselves of the very business that they started out with namely remittance and cambio all right so here's where the company is pivoting and changing focus to now solely offering microfinance credit all right and it seems like they have found a niche in the microfinance credit and we will get to that in the in in further on in the presentation but this is what is happening. They have found a niche in the financials, um, the microfinancial credit sector, and they decide now to just use it to their advantage. All right. So they have a skilled CEO, somebody who knows the, the, the industry inside out, and then they have found the niche. All right. So combining those two together, they, they, they really have huge opportunity ahead of them. All right, so we see where the company is now operating from some eight locations in Jamaica after starting from one, all right? So the company is truly expanding or has been expanding, all right? The company cites tremendous growth opportunity from, from both its local and regional perspective. So from a local and a regional perspective, the company is seeing tremendous um, opportunity for growth. And we will get into the, the growth that the company has cited in, in a few. All right, so we'll see where the company regionally has expanded to Dollar Guyana. All right, so the set up shop in Guyana, as uh, we talked about that, and we want to look at some of the growth opportunities that exist for the Guyana for the Guyana um, business. Let's talk about what everybody loves to hear, the growth, all right, the use of the proceeds. And then we will just move right along to talk about the company's dividend policy. All right, so the use of the proceeds. All right, so the company is looking to raise some $500 million. All right, and, but as we said, not all of that money will go to the company's coffer. All right, so only 250 million of that, that is half of the amount of money that will be raised, will go to the company. Whereas the other $250 million will go to pay off some loans that some people or some other company has borrowed on behalf of the company. All right. So we'll get that out of the way. So this $250 million now that the company will get, what will the company, what, what are the plans that the company has? All right, so we're seeing where the company, as we just mentioned, the company wants to expand regionally and locally because the company is saying there, there, there's a lots of opportunity that exists, all right? So it needs the money, all right, to lay out its strategy, um, erect some other location if possible, all right, and it is planning to go hard locally and regionally through organic, organical growth or by acquisition. And we'll see where the company knows how to grow through acquisition because it has been growing through acquisition. And there, are, there will be in the near future a lot of opportunity for acquisition on the local scene. All right, so the company will... will is now preparing itself. And that is the reason why the company is coming to market at this juncture, this specific point in time. All right, so this is well strategized and, and calculated. This is a calculated step that the company is taking because in the very near future, locally, there will be opportunities for a lot of acquisition. All right, as we are suspecting that the micro sector um, the micro sector, financial sector, will restructure and con consolidate in the very near future. All right. Now that the micro sector will be under the regulation of the BOJ, 
we are suspecting that there will be some amount of um, some amount of requirements that these micro business uh, will come under. All right, so the company wants to strengthen or shore up its capital base. All right, now we know in the normal in the formal banking system, the capital base of a company the is the strength of the banks. All right, and that is what decides how much risk the company can take and how much money the company can lend out. Now we are suspecting that the same thing, similar pattern will happen on the lower microfinance level. All right, so the company will need strength in capital, so capital base in order to, 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 to be able to operate in the sector efficiently. All right. So the company is looking to expand regionally and globally. And we're saying that the opportunities are there. And the company is also looking to strengthen its capital base to meet regulations that is imminent. Dividend policy, and this is what a lot of people want to hear about. But as I know, Blue Collar Finance does not believe in companies or small companies like these with a lot of growth potential paying dividends. All right. So our belief is that the company should rule over this money, take opportunity of, take advantage of the opportunities that exist, and pay shareholders through capital gains. Now, when shareholders get paid through capital gain, there will be no loss of value to the shareholders. As when you sell your, your shares for capital gain, you do not pay any taxes. So this is a way to evade taxes or to avoid taxes, not evade taxes, but avoid taxes, which is legally sound, all right? However, when a company pay dividends, 15% of the money goes to the government. That is a losing shareholders' value. All right, so we do not endorse companies, young companies paying dividends. So we're seeing where the company is, um, is saying that they have a policy of paying up to 50% of the net profit. All right, so that's a large amount of um, dividend that they're planning on paying. However, this will be subjected to the director's discretion all right and the directors will look at whether or not there is need for reinvestment and if there is need for reinvestment reinvestment will take priority over dividends and a couple of things that they give that you can look out for to decide whether or not the company will pay dividends like if there's change changes in roe all right so if the company roe is getting lower then they might not pay dividends all right and that might want to use the money to shore up its ROE or vice versa, who, who, who to tell? They never say exactly which direction the ROE um, will fall in, in order to retain those money. Liquidity needs of the company, the company wants money, all right? To, 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 to shore up its liquidity needs, then they might not pay dividends. And changes in the tax policies also can also lead to the company not paying any dividends. All right, so on your screen, what you're looking at is the board of directors. All right, and I implore you, if you're a serious investor, to take the time out and make sure that you read the profile of these people, all right? Because these are the people who will act as steward over your finances. So when you invest in a company, and then people are gonna manage your money for you in a sense, they will strategize. So if they not have no sense, it means your money will be in the hands of fools. So it would make sense for you to know the background of these people, the experience of these people, all these people think, and the integrity of these people is very important. All right. Now, I will just focus on two people, the chairman. All right, so everybody know the chairman, Ryan Reed, CEO and chair of First Rock Holding Group. 
all right and he's not new to the block people know him and he might lead over to first rock all right which is the parent company of first rock private equity which is a company that owns 75 percent of dollar financial service limited all right now ryan has over 30 years experience in real estate all right in the real and the financial sector all right they are saying that he's the director of multiple private sector company holds a bsc in banking and finance and an mba in general management with the university of the west indies all right so ryan reed somebody where most people know all right and good youth now kadeen mirrors the man of the day all right very young and aspiring youth and who is the executive who is an executive director because he's currently the ceo of this company all right so kadeen executive ceo chair of Decuity board also and i guess he's a co-founder um, co of Decuity. all right he's also a director of dollar um, guyana all right so there's a lot of work them again this young man for the film gain the experience necessary they want to turn him in a star which he is already all right so work experience and work across a wide bread work across a, a wide breadth of the financial system from the credit union to the commercial banking, investment banking, all right? So that's a lot of experience there. It has a BSc in business, add a master's in business, add on with some um, focus on marketing also. And that, that's a degree from the UTEC. He's a certified expert in microfinance. Is the first I'm hearing that. All right, so a certified expert in microfinance, and he got that certification from Frankfurt School of Finance Management in Germany. So this brother took the thing serious. All right, so in, in the finance, the microfinance area, so he get himself certified, and general, you look like him of the thing, but lockdown. All right, before we go on any further, this is very important. All right, so when, when you're investing in a company as an investor, as a minority shareholder who will not have any control of, of such over the decision making, all right, because it's the people who have the larger amount of, of shares will get the larger amount of votes that will decide the direction of the company because it's a democracy all right so these companies run under a democracy regime all right so the larger vote or uh, the larger share count get the larger vote so what you want to do as a minority shareholder is to align yourself or to ensure that the people with the decision the people that makes the decision or run the company on a deal-to-deal -deal basis they interest is in alignment with your interests so we now move to something what i'm called skin in the game so i know who have skin in the game from who on the skin in the game because people with skin in the game meaning people who are invested in the company like how you are invested in the company would want to see the interests of the company all right, so you want to ensure that their interest is in alignment with yours. So you don't really want people that run the company that does not have any interest in the company, then we run it to wreck because it means they're not going to lose nothing. So they're going to take a lot of risk. All right, so when the company crash and burn, you lose, them no lose because them not have no skin in the game. So what we're looking at is a chart that shows us people with skin in the game, all right? So, and the skin can be from a connected party. It can be a personal skin, but skin for inner game, all right? So here again, the Ryan Reed, uh, we're looking at how much skin him have in the game. 
the number of shares him have connection to, there it goes from 342 million. All right, and it's from a connected party perspective. So I don't know if it's a company that he is a part owner of, it, it never say, all right, but you might have some connection. It could be some people, some his wife, it could be somebody have shares that would give him skin to, you know what I mean? But the company that he's affiliated with, here it is, it's First Rock Private Equity. All right, so this is where I'm getting the skin from. So maybe I'm have some oil in, in the first rock. Now at the end of the day, the issued shares after the invitation, the amount of skin I'm have is just 16%, 16.3%. So that's a good amount. All right. And the other directors, you can look through those too, because as I said, you're supposed to read through the profiles of the directors to see their background and here it is this can add some amount of information to your study study ration all right to know how much skin each director have so Kadeem Mir since we look upon him in the director profile we could look upon him in the skin of the game the skin in the game number of shares before the opening 562 million 500 thousand that is a connection to shares which would give him some 25 percent all right, and, and it's from a connected party also. All right, so the connected party is the equity, and the equity capital management. All right, so he's a part owner of that company and him have a skin after the invitation of 20%. All right, so it's, it him have good skin in the game. So here it is, we're seeing where these two people have a large amount of skin, 16% and 20% they would want to see this company strive all right and hopefully they would emphasize long-term gains over short-term gains all right so this puts their interest in alignment with your interest as a minority shareholder who might not have a say in the day-to-day -day operation of the company so it's a good look from that perspective all right, so what you're looking at is the loan product or the product type that this company offers. All right, and as I said, it seems like the company has found some niche in the market. All right, and the niche, if, it's, if there's a niche, it would show up itself in terms of the product that the company offers. All right, so... The company offers eight interest bearing products. All right, and these are the products, eight products. All right, and from, from, from a, a, a first glimpse, it would have seen that this is a well diversified portfolio. All right, but take a closer look. The blue line, which is Dollar Elite is 46% of the portfolio, whereas the green, which is dollar value person, is 34% of the portfolio. And those two loan type makes up some 80% of the portfolio. So the diversification that we first saw is not there is not a diversified portfolio is a highly concentrated portfolio that these people are running this can be a strength of the company and it can also be a weakness all right so it can be a strength in that if it's all good then they would make a big bang if if it is that the sector or the the, the people or the whomever that they lend this money to. If things are happening, things are good, then it will show up as being good in the financials. But if these people, our company are going through a hard time, then it will affect the company financials just the same, all right? So let us get into it though. What are these two products? 
and why are they loaning so much money to these two products or through these two vehicles all right and is this telling us something about the strategy of the company so let us start um, start with dollar elite which represents some 46 percent of the portfolio all right so this loan product targets entrepreneurs and high net worth individual clients all right so here it is that it seems like it's a business loan so entrepreneurs startup people people high net worth people are mostly high net worth people will not really take personal loan these types of people will take business loan to do business all right to enhance their net worth so what we're finding out is that this loan product is geared towards these type of people entrepreneur and high net worth people all right so what it does is to help them to pay their suppliers so these are people in business and if they have some liquidity squeeze and cannot get any cash get their hands on cash so as to pay their suppliers so as to continue doing business with these people then they can come to a dollar financial service they lend them the money they get the money pay the suppliers business as usual and pay back dollar with interest all right so here it is that we're seeing where dollar is focusing on business so these are business loans and these can be unsecured or secured loan all right so in terms of secured loan you will use your fixed asset the business fixed asset you use land to secure it fixed asset to secure these loans motor vehicle equipment that are used in business all right so you use these types of things to secure this loan so it's not as risky as we would want to think if it is that they are secured loan but we will get into how secured uh what portion of the portfolio is secured versus unsecured loan all right let us look at the next loan product which is dollar value personal all right so this seems like it is some personal loan all right that they will lend out and that represents some 34 percent of the loan book all right so this loan product is geared towards employee and you could be working in either the private sector or the public sector and again this loan type can be either unsecured or secured payment option though is through salary deduction all right so with the salary reduction it is less risky even if it is unsecured all right bank transfer then again that is less risky and over the counter you're working and you pay your money so even though it is um, some of them can be unsecured the, the mean of payment will lessen the risk in these types of loan what we'll find out is that the maturity or the typical maturity of the loan book is from three months to 36 months all right so it seems like from three months to three year and the average is a 12 month all right, so the average duration of these loans are one year. All right, so what the company is saying is that the loan portfolio grew at a compounded annual growth rate of 66%, all right, over the last five years. And there is still room for massive growth, both regionally and um locally here again we're dividing the loan type but we are dividing the loan the micro finance sector loan into two types all right so the broad financial sector we are dividing them into two types alone all right and it can be either consumer loan or business loan so it is c or b consumer versus a business or personal loan all right and this is how this is the 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 the, the mix of loan that dollar financial service limited has all right and this is where we are saying the company has found a niche and it is doing quite well servicing this niche all right so what we, what we realize is that the microfinance sector the ratio of 
consumer loan to business loan in general is nine to one, all right? So the larger companies in the sector, which, which are the movers of the sector, will lend out a nine to one ratio. That is nine consumer loan, maybe in dollar term, but the consumer loan is nine times the business loans, all right? And we see where dollar has reversed that trend and dollar is now lending out a ratio of two to one, all right? So dollar is lending out some two business loan to one consumer loan. And you can see it in, in the ratio that we're seeing here. This is the business loan, which is 62 or 64% of the entire loan book. All right, and if we come around here, this is the consumer loan, which is 30%. All right, so business loan is twice consumer loan. It's more than twice consumer loan. So dollar financial service is has a ratio of two to one. That is business loan is twice consumer loan. All right. And what you realize is that the business loan represents secured loan. So if you look at the yellow part, these are secured business loan, the yellow part. All right. Secured business loan. And the the green, the gray part here, unsecured, is unsecured consumer loan. All right. So this is the thing. They are lending out twice as much business loan and business loan are mostly secured loan. All right. And consumer loans are least likely to be secured. But again, the way the payment of these consumer loan will take away some of the risk. Remember, it is salary deduction or bank transfer. All right, so you have the, the, the company has first um, access to that money before the money goes into the pocket of the client. All right, so that lessens the risk dramatically. All right, so we are seeing where Dollar Financial Service Limited is lending far more money to the business sector than to personal loan, than to fund personal, um, than to fund personal purchases. All right, so now what we're looking at, we're looking at accesses. All right, we're looking at access loan book. And we're seeing where personal loan for access financial service, which is one of the larger, if not the largest company, which is the largest company or the largest player in the sector. The personal loan book for access is some 92 or 93%, all right, as of March 2021, all right? Whereas the business loan for the company which is here, just represents 7%. So you see where access and dollar financial service is opposite in this regards. All right, so let us look at ISP's loan book to see how ISP uh, mix its business loan and personal loan. And here we see where ISP you can look at the bottom of the screen, highest speed, total loan for the period. All right. Seems like some $847 million. All right. But when you take out provision, take your provision for that, then the loan. The net loan for ISP is 675 million, all right? So it is 847 less provision. So it gets a, a net of 675. All right, so half that 675 million. I mean, of that 847 million, 753 million is personal loan. All 
All right, so here it is. Personal loan makes up majority of ISPs, financial or type of loan. So ISP have a ratio of 89 to 11. All right, so again, ISP and access has most are mostly personal loan versus business loan. Since Dallas Financial Service Limited lends most of its money to the business sector, it just makes sense for us to look at its loan portfolio from the different business sector, what portion of the business sector, what business sector it lends most of the money to, all right? And the whole, and the mix, of sectors that it lends the money to. All right, so the company lends money to the construction sector, the business processing industry, manufacturing, tourism and hospitality, trucking haulage and transportation and the retail industry and other service. All right, so those are the sectors that the company focuses on. And we're seeing where the larger, the company that pulls the larger amount of this loan or the sector get, that gets a larger amount of this loan get some 22% of the total um, loan portfolio and it is chucking haulage and transportation sector, all right? And now the construction sector gets the second largest with 18% and that's right across over here. 18% is the, const um, the construction sector and then the manufacturing sector right across here, 17%. All right, so those three sector makes up 57% of the company's total loan book. All right, and the remainder is spread across other businesses such as the business process industry, business processing industry, other services, retail, and those and the like. All right, so we're seeing where Dollar Financial Service Limited has, remember though, they're saying Mr. Mir, the CEO, focuses on high margin business. All right, but by nature, the financial, the microfinancial sector is a high margin business because the spread is really high. But it seems like Mr. Mir is getting more spread. All right. And, 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 and it seems like that more spread is coming from the loan book, the mix of loan book, the fact that it is lending more money to businesses versus personal loan. All right. And we will look at the quality of those loans because we are seeing where majority of the business loans are secured loans versus the unsecured loan for personal loans. All right, so you might have um, something going there also again. All right, so it will be interesting to look at the financials to see how these strategies, all right, and how these different focus of this dollar financial service company will filter down to the figures to see if it really makes sense to tweak the portfolio or tilt the portfolio to the business sector rather than the personal loan sector. And if that's the case, why does or why do Access Finance and ISP continue to lend majority of their money to personal, the personal loan products versus the business loan products? All right. So All right, so let us continue with the outlook and the strategy of the company. All right, so we're seeing where in, in the reading, they're saying management believe that the, for the short term and the medium term, they're expecting significant growth both locally in the Jamaican in environment and regionally. All right, and that the, the region is a Caribbean that they're talking about. It's only one outlet they have, and it's in Guyana. So we don't know if they are planning to do more acquisition in other Caribbean territories, all right? But so far, 
they are in Guyana and they are seeing where huge, huge, huge amount of growth can come from that economy. All right, so let us just talk about the growth prospect that the company has, both locally and regionally. But we'll start in Guyana. Now, as you know, Guyana fine oil just the other day. All right, so whereas in, in, in the COVID period when all economies were shrinking, Guyana was growing like crazy. I think Guyana grew some 43% in GDP. And I mean, that, that's supposed to be in real term. All right, so Guyana was the fastest growing economy in real GDP, all right, because the company struck gold in that the company finds oil and they are doing a lot of extraction of oil and oil is selling at high price, all right? So high price has gone up due to the war in Ukraine and the, 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 the supply of oil has lessened a bit. So Guyana find oil at a time when oil supply is down. So it's a rocket, the, the, the price skyrocket. So the country is now oil rich. But we see where a lot of company has oil and squander the oil money. But the Guyana government is committed to developing non-oil sector of the economy. All right. So they are committed to, to allow the oil profit to spill over to other sector of the economy. All right. So as I said before, Guyana grew some 43%. All right, and in the first quarter of 2020, the extracting sector grew some 65%. That's the extraction, extraction of oil. Manufacturing sector was up 13%. The construction sector was up 25%. So it's where this company is growing tremendously. All right, and it is said that a lot of people in this sector, because in this country, there was the, the financial sector was not built out as yet. All right, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done as it regards to the financial sector. All right, so there is room, there's a lot of opportunities for a microfinance company to operate in that sector. And Dollar Financial Service Limited is one of the first company to head down to Guyana and start offering these micro types of product. All right. So what it means, the company will benefit from what they call a first mover in the market. All right. So it will gobble up all of the opportunities there is in that market. All right. So it seems as if the company really has a tremendous growth. Now, on the local scene, we see where... The economy is rambling from what you call high inflation. The central bank is trying to tame inflation. So the central bank is increasing rates. The central bank has increased the rate just the other day, the 19th of this month. All right. And that's the, about the fourth time since the central bank increased rate. Rate is over 4% now. So what this means, this, is, this, this means it's a negative effect for the company. All right. As this will squeeze the company's spread. All right, so the cost of funding, the cost of funding for the company will get higher. And we're expecting that to put a spread on the, um, to put a, a squeeze on the spread of the company if it is that the company is not able to pass through those rising interest rates to the consumer. And we'll see where in the, in the bank's data, this increase in rates has not hit the consumer as yet. All right. So, so far, it seems like the banking sector has been absorbed in these increase. However, the, oppo uh, the opposing side of that now and the growth aspect that will come from the Jamaica, the Jamaica environment or the, the, the microfinance sector of, of the local scene is the fact that the Bank of Jamaica is setting out or is in its final stage of regulating the microfinance sector. All right, so the bank has, has launched the Microcredit Act in 2020. All right, so the 2021, I think. All right, so the act is now drafted and it is now in operation and all 
companies within the sector are expected to be compliant by July this year. All right. And if you're following the news any at all, you'll realize that a lot of them are crying because they don't believe that they can make the deadline yet. All right. And what this means is that to be regular to be compliant with this regulation will be will mean high costs to the company and some of them do not have that money so it will it is a new expense that will put a lot of them in the red all right so they would have to now start hiring the auditor they have to now have a compliance officer all right and these are big jobs all right where a lot of them are not ready for them. so we are suspecting that in the very short term the microfinancial landscape in the local market will start restructure and consolidate so you will find that the larger companies that has the strength of cash will start buy up or gobble up the smaller companies so they must start buy up the loan books of the smaller companies they'll stick over the loan books put them into their framework and get that economy of scale from it all right so we are looking and this as i said this is an opportune time for dollar financial service limited to be raising rates or to be raising money in the capital market this is a strategic move and this is what the company is citing right this is what they are seeing and this is this is strategic and i cannot emphasize how skillful these management are to be looking at this they are really monitoring the microfinancial sector all right so as I said, the sector is looking to consolidate very soon and there will be loads of opportunities. All right, so the company that has the strength of cash, the capital base, will be able to gobble up all these small companies, all right, that will be going under, that will be falling over because of this heavy burden of regulation from the Bank of Jamaica. All right, so the dollar financial service will be gobbling up these loan portfolio and adding them to their financials and they they will come out looking stronger than they went in all right so that's it for the qualitative analysis of the prospectus and as i know a blue color finance something i beg if you just like share share the thing with at least one person comment Tell me what you think and subscribe if you never subscribe. All right. And we are going to drop part two of the prospectus or the review of the prospectus. Because what we are going to do, we are going to look on the financial aspect of it. All right. So we are going to tell the dollar's financial story from the financial part, just the figures that we are going to use and see if that story add up to the story that we just told now. All right. So, see you in the next video.